Um, I want to give a lot of credit to the team sticking with it. The Clippers, uh, that's a really well-coached, hard-playing team. Um, they threw a big punch in the second quarter, um, and our guys came out of halftime, you know, with the appropriate energy and focus. Um, did it as a group. I thought, you know, a lot of guys participated tonight. You know, another night was six guys in double figure scoring. Um, I thought Jared Vanderbilt's energy in the second half, big offensive rebound tip ins, causing some turnovers. Um, you know, he and Collins energy sparked us. I thought JC was was really good for us, um, you know, playing through some foul trouble. And, you know, Lowry, Kelly continue to be steady for us as always. Um, it, was, it was a team win and uh, I'm really proud of the guys. They've, it's been a tough, you know, last couple games and they haven't wavered in their belief and togetherness and um, nobody's pointed fingers at anybody. They've just taken their own piece of responsibility every day and just try to get better. So um, looking forward to them taking care of their bodies tomorrow and get back at it on Friday. Coach, was there a reason uh, why you turned the rotation in? In the second half, played seven guys. We were trying to win and I thought those guys had good mojo tonight. Um, you know, it was just a, a feel thing. Nobody necessarily did anything wrong or terrible. It was just I thought that group was playing very well. Um, and I thought it was really important that we come out of tonight with a win. Third quarter, Jordan picks up his fourth foul, and Malik came up off the bench. He was going to come in. I think Jordan is the one that told you, like, I want to stay in. Yeah, you know, those are always moments of conversation between a coach and a player. Um, generally, they want to stay in. I thought Jordan was in a good flow of the game. And so um, when I saw he got his, his foul, my initial reaction was to take him out for a couple of minutes. And he promised me that he was not going to foul again. Um, so, you know, th those are moments where it's, it's us having a conversation and, um, you know, generally we have a lot of trust in our guys. And I, th I think that because of the way that Jordan was playing and he was really in a good flow of the game, um, you know, decided to, to roll with him and it worked out. When it comes to like, you got JC, for example, plays the entire second half until just the very end. How do you kind of like monitor if these guys need a rest, if they need one, don't need one? Like, how do you kind of figure that out? Yeah, if I'm being honest, I told JC to take the timeout seriously because you're not coming out. I said, that's just the way it is. I don't want to hear you're tired. Drink water and rest during the timeouts. You're in a really good space right now for us, and we need you. Um, you know, there's obviously always moments um, where we do have to take into account our players' health and well-being and if they are sort of redlining, I guess as they call it, you do have to get them a sub. But um, if there's one thing that I know about Jordan in the short time that I've been around him, he's in unbelievable shape. I feel like he's never really tired. Um, and that started in training camp. Like he came into training camp just sort of shot out of a cannon every day and um, never, never complains about fatigue. So um, again, th those are feel moments. Um, having conversations with the guys about trying to get him a rest. You know, Lowry looked a little bit tired there, so we tried to get him out for a few minutes. Colin asked for a sub, which was denied. Um, it's just the way it is sometimes. Um, they can dig a little deeper um, in some of those moments. And um, yeah. When did, when did Colin ask for a sub? Colin asked for a sub at some point, six and a half minutes maybe in the fourth. I can't say publicly what I said to him. <laughs> um, I just told him to take the time out seriously, drink some water and electrolytes and take some deep breaths, but you're going back in. Well, Kessler's rim defense tonight, how would you describe what you saw? Another, you know, it, it, it's pretty amazing what Walker's able to do at this stage in his career. Um, we've talked about it a lot, but it can't be overemphasized. His ability to block shots with both hands. Um, a lot of players around the rim, you know, verticality is a big thing in the NBA. And so guys sort of jump straight up and 
they aren't really looking at anything. And Walker has an unbelievable ability to be straight up and follow the ball with his eyes and then at the end get the ball with whatever hand is on that side. Um, he's really, really good for us in that area. He's getting better and better every day at doing it without fouling, which is an art. Um, sometimes you get tempted to reach in and slap down and he's picking his moments of when to go try to block the shot and when to just try to make him finish over him. Um, it, he's been unbelievable for us in that area and you know it, it's something that we're going to continue to need from him. Um, he watches a lot of film. He's learning pick and roll defense in the NBA, trying to figure out the right height that he needs to be at depending on who's coming off the screen so that he doesn't get blown by. Um, but Walker works hard, and he's a very cerebral uh, kid, um, studies the game on both ends of the floor a lot. You went zone a good amount tonight. Why and what did you see from it? Uh, I think they score. I think we ran 23 possessions tonight, and they scored 24 points. Um, that's what I was told by the assistants. It's We had gotten to a point where we need to have something to mix up the rhythm of the game. And... We also switched a lot more tonight um, on and off the ball. Uh, we've been switching on the ball, but we have not been switching off the ball. So it was, uh, you know, we, we talked to the team pretty candidly just about, hey, we need to have something in our package that we can go to to just change the rhythm of the game. Um, so we've been working on the zone actually for probably about 10 days now. Um, Coming into tonight, we had run three possessions of it, and the other team had made a three on every single one of them. So um, my belief wasn't quite there yet. Uh, the assistants did a very good job of continuing to encourage me that that's a very small sample size and that the guys are getting better at understanding it. So we worked on it yesterday in practice, um, and tonight felt like a good night to, to really give it a full look. Um, and I thought the guys, for the most part, did a very good job. It, it activates your team from a communication standpoint because it's impossible to play a zone without talking to each other. So um, I thought the guys handled it really, really well. It, it's not easy to change defenses on the fly, possession by possession. Um, takes a lot of communication from them, and I thought they did a great job of that. Turnovers seem to come in bunches. Uh, second quarter and night, there were a bunch. Monday night, there was a stretch in the fourth quarter. What's key in those? What do you see? Yeah, I think... <clears throat> We we can get a little sped up at times. Um, we're trying to play fast and we're trying to move the ball and have multiple people touch it. Um, I do think at, at times we have guys that are, their intent is very good. Like they're trying to make a play to turn the momentum back in our favor. And I think in those moments we need to just recognize that it's a long game and you don't have to get it all back on one play um, because you're right when, when we have those bunches it really kills the momentum um, it hurts the crowd it hurts uh, all of us um, we just have to do a better job of understanding in those moments like hey we did not just have a good possession this next possession we need to slow down just a little bit make sure our spacing's good and really try to execute so um, you know that that happens a little bit when a lot of different people are handling the ball. Um, you know, some teams have one player making them a majority of the decisions, and we have a lot of different guys making decisions. So, um, you know, I can do a better job in those moments, too, of slowing us down and trying to get us into something that's a little more deliberate. Um, but the pace and ball movement has been a big part of our identity. Um, you know, we continue to show film on our spacing and the different reads um, in an attempt to try to cut down some of the, the careless turnovers. Um, but ultimately for me, passing turnovers don't bother me as much as the ones off the dribble. Um, the intent to pass to a teammate is a big part of who we are. Um, sometimes the pass misses the target. Sometimes we're trying to thread the needle a little bit. Um, I think the ones we're really trying to cut down are the ones off the dribble where we're driving into a crowd and a second defender gets their hand on the ball. Um, those are moments where we need to be looking to pass. We've talked a lot about the evolution of Colin, Taylor, Nikhil. What do you want to see more out of Jared or kind of where have you seen progress the last few weeks from him? Jared is um, an energizer for our team. And the beginning from the beginning of the season, 
that's who he was for us. He would start, it felt like almost every game, by forcing a turnover, getting an offensive rebound. Um, he's somebody that, that helps us win the possession battle in, in those plays. And I think, you know, we've been, Jared's been working a lot on recognizing the situations where he can be a little bit more solid defensively um, because his instinct is to stir it up and to shoot the gap and try to get a steal. And so there's a fine line there. Um, I don't want to strip Jared of his great instincts for the ball. It's more about just trying to recognize the the couple times a game where he gets himself out of position. You know, early in the season, we had the, that conversation about some of his fouling. Um, his intent is good and his instincts are good, but sometimes he gets a little bit um, overzealous in those moments. So, you know, we want Jared to continue to be who he is. Um, he adds a different dynamic to our team in terms of his ability to help us win the possession game. Thank you. Thank you.